This video is going to focus on estimates and invoices. The goal here is to show you how you can set up your LMN estimates and your QuickBooks estimates and invoices so that you can track your revenue for perfect job costing. And the ultimate goal is to show you how you can do it with less work than you're actually putting into it today. The most important part of this video is to make sure that your revenue from your LMN estimates and ultimately from the invoices that you make in QuickBooks gets tracked properly to ensure that number one, your revenue ends up in the correct chart of account. Number two, you can use that revenue for job costing, both on a job level, but also on a service type level. So install versus maintenance versus snow, etc. And that you can also take a look at your company divisions, those same services, and analyze their gross profit. So what did you earn in revenue and what did you spend on labor and materials and other expenses? So there's some pretty simple steps for setting up your estimates and invoices that you need to do first before you jump into exporting or creating them. So number one, make sure that you've created your service items in QuickBooks and that you've linked them to the correct chart of accounts. We did that in the last video and if you haven't watched that video, watch it now because you're way ahead of yourself. This video sort of picks up in number two, which is to create cost codes in LMN. Cost codes in LMN are found under estimate setup and down here on the cost codes menu. You're going to see this list and what you should have is one cost code per service item in QuickBooks that you're actually going to use. So for many companies, their service items in QuickBooks is a big list. 99% of it you probably don't even need. So don't bring over all your cost codes from QuickBooks. Only bring over what you're going to need. Now if I flash back quickly to my cost codes in QuickBooks, go to my item list, because LMN only deals with estimates and not vendor invoices or subcontractor invoices or anything like that, I don't even need any of these sub items. I really just need my parent items set up in LMN. So 4010.0 hardscaping, 4020.0 softscaping, 4030.0 extras, landscape lighting, maintenance, snow and ice, irrigation. These are the only things I need set up because that's all I'm using for revenue traffic. All I need is the cost codes I'm going to use on my estimates. I don't need to worry about my vendor expense cost codes. So I've brought into here cost codes that match the service items that I've had in QuickBooks just for the top level items. And I also added two more, unbillable and overhead, which will allow me to track expenses more so in LMN time. That's more for time track. I won't really assign these for any customer invoices, but I will need those in LMN time if I want to track things like drive time or work around the shop or shop setup time in the morning separately from my jobs. And again, that you go right back into QuickBooks. You can set up service items for those as well to make sure you can track those hours and payroll costs separately. You'll never use those service items on invoices, but you will use them for timesheet and possibly even uh, material vendor expense tracking. Once you've got these set up in LMN, now we need to move on to the next step in our list here. And the next step is to link your QuickBooks service items with their corresponding LMN cost code. A way to do that is to use the LMN QuickBooks Sync tool. Make sure you're clicked here on LMN Estimating. Then go here to step four, match your cost codes and your tax codes. If you're doing this for the first time, make sure you got your QuickBooks open and logged into an administrator account. And the first thing you'll be prompted to do is actually match your tax information. And what this is going to look at is your taxes that you've set up in LMN, the taxes that you've set up in QuickBooks, and make sure that they're linked uh, accordingly. I've already done this step, and it's a little outside job costing, so I'm going to skip past it. Fairly straightforward, though. We want to make sure each tax in QuickBooks as a corresponding tax in LMN, or at least that your taxes in LMN match your tax in QuickBooks. Next thing it's going to ask you to match is your job cost code information. Now when this screen loads, on the left hand side, you are going to see a list of your QuickBooks service items. On the right hand side is going to be a list of your LMN cost codes. What you want to do to match them is to grab the cost code that you want to match, drag it from QuickBooks over to LMN and drop it in this column. So now my LMN cost code 4010 hardscaping has a corresponding cost code of 4010 hardscaping in QuickBooks. These are my LMN QuickBooks and this is the service item that it's matched to in QuickBooks. And again to do the match you just drag in and drop it right over. Now I've got one here for enhancement labor that I haven't matched yet. 
And I can know I haven't matched it because it's got that yellow icon beside it instead of the green check mark. So I want to just grab that, drag it over there. And that'll match my cost code in LMN called enhancement labor to the service item I want to match it to in QuickBooks, which is my construction extras. Now, once again, remember, you don't need every single QuickBooks item out of QuickBooks into LMN. You only need the ones that top level items that you're going to use. So basically just service items that you're going to use for either customer invoices. That'll, that'll be used in LMN estimating. Or you're going to need the ones that you use for timesheets. That'll be for LMN time. A simple way if you've got nothing set up in LMN is to run this. Simply click it and there is an import button over here. You can just click the import. That'll automatically bring it into LMN and match it for you all in one step. I've got the ones I've set up already that I need, so I'm good. I hit next. Ask you, are you sure? You hit save, and, and yes, they're matched. So now, back here to our steps, I now have a link of all my QuickBooks service items and element cost code. Every element cost code has a corresponding service item. And what that's going to do is, when I export my estimates, it's going to make sure that that estimate gets assigned the right service item when I create that estimate in QuickBooks. So now let's look at creating an LMN estimate. So here's the LMN estimate I'm looking to export. It's for a customer named Sandra Alberts. I don't have this customer yet set up in QuickBooks. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, Sandra's got five major parts of this job. So five work areas. So there's a patio and a retaining wall, an interlock driveway, a front garden, some prep and planting, lighting, and a pergola. Now it's my job to assign each one of these work areas the cost code. And what this is doing is setting the table for job costing. What it's telling it is that the revenue that we're going to earn from these different things needs to get assigned to this QuickBooks service item. I, yes, it's an element cost code right now, but each cost code is linked to a service item in QuickBooks. So this is telling us where we're going to track or how we're going to track this revenue in QuickBooks when it comes down to service items. Now you can set each one of these individually. It's even faster if you click the cost codes button here. And now I can set them all and click OK. Now once you've got this all set up, you're ready for an export to QuickBooks. It's going to know to create an estimate for this customer and for these amounts here to apply these service items to these amounts when it gets booked. So it ends up in A, the right chart of account, and B, we can do our job costing on it. I know this job, hardscaping, I've got back patio, interlock, and landscape lighting. So all my revenue and all my costs for labor and materials, etc., for hardscaping is going to pull from these three items. For my softscaping, I'm going to look at the revenue here and the labor time here and the materials here to get my profitability on, on softscaping. And for the extras, I've got the, uh, the patio pergola. When I'm ready to export, I just flag this as export to QuickBooks. You'll see here it's queued for export. And the next time I run my QuickBooks export, this estimate will get exported out of LMN into QuickBooks and will be assigned the correct service items. So back to our step-by-step -step list. We've now created our LMN estimate and we've assigned the correct cost codes for each line item in the estimate. Our next step is to export this estimate to QuickBooks. And as a note, it's going to not create an invoice in QuickBooks. It's going to create an estimate in QuickBooks. And that is better because it will allow you to do things like progress invoicing or whatever. You can take that estimate and you can either create an entire invoice off it or you can take that estimate and say, we want to invoice for 20% for the draw. We want to invoice for 30% for the second payment, et cetera, et cetera. Now to export an estimate out of LMN into QuickBooks, I go back to my QuickBooks sync tool and I click import estimates. And once again, I want to make sure that I've got QuickBooks open and logged in uh, to an account. And what it's doing right now is it's going out to my QuickBooks queue, so all the estimates that are sitting in the queue, and it's retrieving these from my LMN database. Here I've ended up with only one estimate in the queue. And if I had had multiple estimates, they would all show up here. But to keep things simple, we'll just look at one. Here's the estimate we were just looking at, Sandra Alberts. She's in the queue, so she's ready to get exported. The import type is going to be summary, which means it's just going to export the work area totals. It's not going to export every single line item. And over here, I'm able to either match the customer to an existing customer in QuickBooks, or, as the import status is going to tell me here, it's going to create a new customer, new job. And I don't have Sandra in my QuickBooks already, so I'm going to leave it at new customer, new job. Click Sync Now, and what it's going to do is push that estimate 
out of LMN into QuickBooks, but make sure that that estimate gets assigned the correct service items for good job costing. Once it's done, it's going to import the results. It tells me here that my synchronization is complete and it exported successfully. If you have problems, of course, you can click the import log file for details. But if I jump into QuickBooks now and I go to my customers, you're going to see I have a new customer here now called Sandra Alberts. And there's a job called Sandra Alberts SKO5, which was the name of my project. And that job now has an estimate. And if I open this estimate, my back patio and retaining wall, my driveway, my garden crop, my lighting, my pergola, each one assigned to the correct service item here that I wanted to create. These would go back again to my list item list, all the service items that we created in the previous video. Each one of these has been assigned the right service item so that all the revenue from my retaining wall and my patio and my driveway and from my lighting is all going to end up in hardscaping. My garden is going to go to softscaping and my pergola is extras. Now in the last video, you saw me create a lighting service item. So now that I have that, I could use it on this job. Easy to switch after. Just drop this down. Here's all my service items right here. I'm going to pick landscape lighting. Now this revenue is going to go to my landscape lighting account or my landscape lighting service item for reporting. Save and close that. Now, when I'm ready to actually apply revenue to Sandra's job, I need to create an invoice. An estimate doesn't actually put any revenue together for job costing. We need to create an invoice for that. So to create an invoice, I simply open the estimate and I go up here to create invoice. I'll hit that button and it asks me, do you want to create an invoice for the entire estimate or for a percentage of the estimate? So let's say we're looking for a 20% deposit. So I'll create an estimate for a percentage, 20%. I'll click OK. Now it creates an invoice for 20% of the original amount. Here's the original amount of my back patio. Quantity is 0.2 or 20%. There's my rate. And there's the amount we're asking for in this invoice. So from Sandra, I need an $11,967 check for the 20% deposit. Now as soon as I save and close this invoice, what it's done now, because I've made an invoice, now it's applied the revenue for that job to Sandra's job. If I go to reports, job costing, job profitability detail, and I run a report on Sandra Albert's job, and here it is right here, Sandra Albert, Sandra Albert's job, SKO5. It's going to show me I have one, two, three, four service items on these jobs, the same ones I had in my estimates, hardscaping, softscaping, extras, and lighting. My revenue has been now filled out because I've now created an invoice for this job. So now it's counting this invoice revenue against not only the job, but each one of the service items correctly. And the costs are nothing because I haven't yet created any vendor invoices or timesheets, etc. We'll do that in the next couple of videos, so stick with us on that. That takes us through our steps there. We've sort of created the service items. We've linked them in LMN. We've created an estimate. We've exported it to QuickBooks. And now what you've done is set the foundation for great job costing and all your jobs in QuickBooks. And as you go through these videos, you'll quickly realize that this may even be less work than you're currently doing. The estimate was already created. My customer was created. My job was created. The estimate and the invoice match each other perfectly because the computer did it. No risk of data entry. No time spent entering information at all. And it's set for perfect job costing. We'll get into the job costing part of this uh, job in the next